Hello, this is Craig Mertens, Director of Product Education for Inktabo, the parent company of Inksoft, Printabo, Graphics Flow, and Sign Tracker. Welcome to the webinar today. Wanted to do something a little bit different today. I want to challenge Inksoft users. And what I mean by that, you know, it's like any other software platform. You invest in a platform. Most people will, you know, they'll learn the basics. They have a surface level understanding of the application. But the, there's some very powerful things that you can do in Inksoft to help grow your business. And I'm going to show you a, a process and a technique for doing that. And the best part is you're going to be using tools that you've already invested in. I've landed in Inksoft. This is actually our demo store. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the main navigation. I'm going to head over to the dashboard real quick. And what I, what I want to talk about today is you know, how you can better utilize the Inksoft feature set, how you can utilize some automation to reduce some of your errors, and most importantly, I want to teach you guys how to utilize um, self-service tools within Inksoft to kind of ease the purchasing process for your customers. And one of the things that's critical to this whole process is understanding how admin accounts and user accounts work. And it's a little bit confusing. And I think the reason it's confusing is there's really two things going on. You have an admin account and you have a user account. I actually created a little job aid for this. The account management guide talks about two types of account. An admin account is for your internal team. Those are your people. Those are your employees. You have quite a bit of control over what they can and cannot do. And then user accounts are your customers. And so that would be created a couple different ways. Number one, you can just create a user account for a customer. And number two is the customer creates one for themselves when they check out. And there is a, a kind of a golden ticket connected to the user account. And that golden ticket is the ability in Inksoft to go into your end user shopper portal, uh, which we like to affectionately call the customer account or customer portal, where they can view their past orders, they can reorder, they can see all their art, they can do all of that. So I'm going to talk about admin accounts first. So the admin account controls different levels of access and permissions within the platform. These accounts are responsible for managing stores, products, orders, and other things, depending on the permission level assigned. So you want to be kind of careful about, you know, admin levels when you assign them to your employees. And so, for instance, a store manager would be, you know, a single store, um, and they can go and they can change the settings and layout, but they can't create a new store. So if you just want to give an employee, like a salesperson, maybe access just to go in and curate products in their store for a specific customer, you can absolutely do that. And that's it's actually a pretty handy little permission level where you have people with the proverbial black thumbs that everything they touch um, seems to um, cause computer drama. And that's a, that's the, the least amount of permissions that you can give somebody. And it actually comes in pretty handy. Kind of going up the ladder next is the product manager. Yeah, and the product manager, actually, they can add products to the store. They can go into the admin settings for the store and change admin settings. They can add and edit products. They can change pricing. They still can't create new stores. So th that's a little bit you know, more authority that you're giving them. And just to clarify, store manager, they do not have access to change products around, but they can change the layout. Um, store and product creator, full access to create, manage, and decorate stores, full access to the products tab and admin store. So pretty much anything you can do within a store, um, they're, enable, they're enabled to do that. And then when we go to um, number four, which is fulfill, fulfillment, that's a big word, store printer, then you're all of a sudden giving them access to things like reporting. Um, if you're, I don't think so if you've been with the company a long time and you have some legacy orders, you can get into the legacy order manager. Um, you can go to the artwork tab, meaning you can upload artwork. Um, you can also delete artwork. So, you know, you have to consider that when you go to that, these higher levels, four, five, and six, but you still can't create new stores. Uh, fulfillment man store manager is what opens up the door to create new stores. And, accessing to nearly all features except global settings and payments so they don't have access to any of the financial settings for getting integrated payments working but they can create and edit proposals um, can't create new customers they're cut off from doing that but um, they can certainly create new stores and so when we set up demo accounts for our sales team we usually set them up um, with fulfillment store admin privileges so they can pretty much do everything and that actually leads to some challenges because you get new people that aren't generally familiar with the platform. I just noticed in our demo store today, somebody had gone into the branding function and deleted all the logos. 
uh, not a big deal because yours truly has a backup to that store. I cloned that store. So we had a backup and all I had to do is just download the store logo preview image and the store icon. Only took me a couple minutes to do that. It's always a good idea, I believe, to have a folder in an organized manner that's easy to locate with all the collateral images for your stores. So if something does happen, you have the ability to go and do that. Now, if you're concerned about that happening, then you need to give people a lower level of um, store permission. So if I'd given our sales team, let's say, a level of number three, nobody could have gone into the store branding and deleted those logos. So I think it's generally a good idea to be familiar with the permissions, but it seems to me most people are going to be use, using five and six. And part of the reason for that is you might have a sales team member and you want to give them access to you know, create a quote, create a proposal, and they're not going to be able to do that and unless you give them up to um, number five, but you might not want them to do a store. So as a result of that, you wouldn't elevate them to fulfillment store admin, which is number six. So let's talk about user accounts next. The user account is based on the end user, not your user. So it's the person that's actually um, purchasing. And so the user accounts are a little bit different and creating a user account is a slightly different process. And I'm going to show you how we do that so there's a little bit of clarity on that particular topic. And so I'm going to go back to my Inksoft store. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with user accounts, and we'll talk about admin in a second. So this is the way I always like to navigate in Inksoft. I always like to just click on the Inksoft core. You know, you can go to these little individual um, drop-down menus here, but I like going to Inksoft core because it just lands me on the order manager and then all the navigation is just in this left, left navigation panel. And I find that to be pretty handy. And so if I go down here to marketing, and if I click on marketing, and I go down here to user accounts, you're going to see some filtering. And that filtering is going to be in this drop down right here. So I can go in if I just want to see all the user accounts or if I want to see user accounts for um, specific stores, or if I want to see user accounts that have saved artwork or have not saved artwork, why would I want to see a user account for somebody that saved artwork? Well, maybe they didn't check out and maybe I wanted to um, follow up with them. And I say, hey, wow, this person's been on the designer and they've saved a bunch of artwork, but they've never checked out. I might be a good reason to follow up with them. Now, incidentally, if you in notifications, if you enable the notification setting in the store, for notifying you when any design is saved, you'd be getting an email saying that. But what I want to do is I just want to view all and I wanted to see all my users in here. So I'm just going to hit apply. I could go over here, search as well. And here's all my users, but I'm going to go over here to Matthew Arnold. I'm just going to click on him and I can see Matthew Arnold is connected to the circus print store. And Matthew Arnold's connected to the surface print store because Matthew Arnold checked out of that store. So Matthew Arnold went in, maybe we were doing a demo or something, or he just stumbled across the store and he checked out of that store. And you notice under permission level, we have it set to none. Anytime you have a user account, you set them to none. Because if you give them a permission level, if I go over here and give um, Matthew Arnold a permission level and say I give him store manager level permission, then he can go into the back end and, and see what's going on in the store. Now remember, a store level is a pretty basic permission level. And there are circumstances where you might choose to give your customer that level, but you, you need to understand what the levels enable them to do. And they can't get in a whole lot of trouble with store manager level. You know, it might be a scenario where you think you want to be able to do that, but I would give some very serious consideration to giving one of your customers that level of access. And there's a great workaround for that, which is the store performance dashboard, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But basically you go in here, um, you can go in the account, you can save the account. Um, when you create a new account, it's a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this. And then I'm going to select a new action. I'm going to say add new user account. So when you create an, a new user account, I'll just hit the apply button here. So the store assignment is in here already. Now here's a little, a little tricky, little nuance things. Once that's set, you can't change it. So if somebody has multiple stores and you want to move them around, you'll either need to delete them from the one store, which probably don't want to do that because they might need to go back to it, or you need to add a, another user account and assign them to that store. And there's no harm in having multiple user accounts. This is where you would pick the store assignment 
And the way I was showing you when I did the filtering, that's how you would go in and edit it. So that's basically user accounts. And where that's important is it gives that person the ability to log in to their user account within that store, just that store, and look at their order history, look at you know designs they've saved, things they've saved in the designer, artwork that's been uploaded to their account, all that kind of stuff. So that's a user account. So let's go back to Inksoft Core. And I'm going to go down here to Settings. And I'm going to click on Settings. And you're going to notice um, you have your your um, admin accounts right here. And so under admin accounts, you kind of have to scroll down. So this is where you create a new one up here. What I'm going to do is go down to admin accounts. And this is where you would go in and make actual changes. So I'll, I'll go into myself here and you can do a search real quick on that too, but I'll go into me and there I am right there. And here's all my information notes kind of drop down here. And I am a super admin, so I can do anything I want. I have the keys to the kingdom. And only a super admin can set a permission level for another super admin. So this is the the top level permission that's available. And I could demote myself if I wanted to. So I could go down here and demote myself to a different level. Um, don't really want to do that because if I do that, I can't make myself a super admin all the time, which means I can't create new user accounts. And so when we get a new employee... Um, I'm the one that goes in and sets them up and sets their permission level. So, and I usually will set them to a store level. Usually what I'm going to do a uh, new employee is I'm going to set them to a fulfillment store admin. They're not going to get all these other higher level admin things. So that's how we're going to do that. And you notice those admin levels are not even available in user accounts. So, you know, so this is how you go in and edit a, a level um, here's all my information, any kind of addresses or um, shipping information that's connected to that account is in here. We use that account all the time, process orders and to do demonstration. So it ends up with quite a bit of, of addresses and things that have been entered over the years. But that's basically it. So what? why is that important? You know, Why do you have to know how to do that? Well, there's a reason. Because you can link a proposal to a store. So why is that a big deal? Let me show you why. If if I go over here back to Inksoft Core, and if I go over here to Proposals, Proposals is an invoicing tool. So, yes, I know we named it Proposals. You can use it as a... Get an idea in front of a customer, but it's primarily an invoicing and quoting tool, meaning you can run all your business through Proposals. And there was kind of a light bulb that went off for me. Um, and it's always interesting for me to hear how customers use the platform. And, you know, one of the most common ways that I interact with customers these days is at trade shows. And they've been around in, in the industry for quite a long time. I know quite a few people and folks come up to the booth and they start chatting with me. And a gentleman came up to me in the booth at the Fort Worth show. Boy, it's coming up on two years now. And he had, I think I've shared this story before. He said, Hey, listen, I need to, to actually upgrade my Inksoft account to an unlimited plan. And I said, wow, man, you've already gone through a hundred stores. And he's like, yeah. I said, how long you been with us? He says about a month. And I'm like, wow, you've gone through a hundred stores in a month. That's really impressive. And then what he shared with me is that every one of his customers, he sets a store up for them. And this was probably prior to store cloning. So it was a little bit of work. Now it's not much work to set up a store because you can just clone it. And what he said is I, I do that. And then I use proposals to do all their invoicing. And then all that record of communication that goes into their customer account. Meaning that they can go into their account and see everything they've ever done, see order statuses, if there's things in progress. They don't have to be emailing him, calling him all the time. And it's just a really super easy way to kind of facilitate communication. And his motivation for it was quite interesting to me because what he told me was that... Um, he did it so he didn't have to talk to people. I was like, okay, that's probably a good re And he said something else that was interesting is at this stage of my career, I really don't want to have to work that hard and I really don't want to talk to people. I just want to pretty much just collect orders. And I found by setting up an account for all my customers and then connecting them to a store and running all my invoicing through proposals, everything's all connected. Everything is 
um, running very smoothly. They have a customer account, kind of like an Amazon account. They can go, you know, log in, see what's going on with their their order history. And I was like, oh, man, that is that is just a super smart way to run your business. And I had never really made that connection myself. And sharing that with some of the people, you know, my peers within the organization, they're going, yeah, that's how we designed it to work. But I think people just don't really connect the dots because we called that feature proposals versus calling it invoicing. And so in the Pertavo side of the world, we would call that a quote and invoice. In the Inksop side of the world, we call it a proposal, but you can save a quote or invoice view. All right, we're going to show you how that works. So very important that when you're selecting account in your proposals that you have them connected with the store. So creating that customer in the user account is kind of the first step for all of this. Remember as a user before you even invoice them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit create a new proposal. And I have a bunch of people in here that I've created and I'm going to pull up my friend Bud and Bud is connected to the central boosters store. And you'll notice under store assignment, it's auto populating. So because I had previously set up Bub, Bud and connected him to that store, when I created his user account, it auto populates. Now, if I picked a user that was not assigned to a store, then I would have the ability to go into the drop down list and pick Bud if I wanted to. But I know Bud's always going to run his business through this because he's the coach at the Central Boosters that runs the whole thing. And I will always want to connect him. So I assign him to that store. So if, if I go into the store, the first thing I want to do when I do a proposal is I want to name it. So we're going to call this um, Central Soccer Concept. We're going to get some ideas. Soccer teams are really good this year. They're ranked in the, the top 10. They've got some D1 prospects. We've got all the um, scouts out there looking for them at, at our kids. And it's kind of exciting. So we want to generate some interest and create a little fundraiser store for soccer. But the first thing I want to do is kind of want to get the, the graphics tied down. And this is going to be an offline order. Everybody's going to be wearing these shirts. This is going to be like the basic spirit wear shirt for the whole team. And so I want to get this over to, to um, the coach. But and I went into graphics flow. I already cooked up a couple cool soccer graphics. And this is how I'm going to present it on a product and get it in front of Bud. And hopefully Bud's going to like it and we're going to get an order. So it's already assigned to the store. Um, I'm the salesperson. That's important because we can run commissions out of this. And so the assignee, um, and a lot of times in the case of the assignee is going to be the salesperson. If you're in a situation when you're um, paying commissions, um, you have total flexibility over your PO numbers. So I'll just put in some gibberish right there. And then expiration date. I don't think it's a generally a good idea to do a quote that doesn't expire um, because I just pushed it out 30 days because guess what happens? Your vendors raise prices. The prices are fluid. And so, you know, you put a quote out there that doesn't have an expiration date and they finally decide, oh, you know what, I'm just going to place that order now. And you're like, hey, you know, we talked six months ago. We've got totally different pricing. So this will expire the quote, meaning when they go into the quote and they click on the link, it's going to say expired. In hand state, that's going to be the date where they have to have it. Not when I ship it, but where it needs to be into their hands. And so they're having their big kickoff meeting on the 25th. So I want to give myself a little bit of grace, 23rd. And I probably want to schedule my production somewhere between the 15th and 18th. It's pulling up an automated tax rate. We're connected with tax jar. So it's looking at um, their tax rate. If they're tax exempt, I would have already in Bud's account, I would have already been said tax exempt, but we can just set it to non-tax. We'll do that right now. Um, exempt reason, it's going to ask you. I'm going to put down not for profit. And, you know, good business advice. You know, if somebody says they're tax exempt, um, get paperwork on that because unfortunately the, the entity that's liable is you. And so it's generally a good idea, especially if it's, you know, if it's a school or something and you know state laws, you know, schools are exempt for tax. That's easy. But, you know, if they don't have the right paperwork filled out for a nonprofit, um, that could give you, you some legal exposure. Um, and then what we're going to do is payment details, um, but it's pretty reliable. Um, and we know there's a PO process that we have to go through. And fortunately, we have to wait forever to get the money from the school. So what we're going to do is say no deposit required. But what's changed now is a lot of the schools and a lot of the um, athletic departments have access to credit cards. And up to a certain dollar um, amount, they can put money on their credit card. So 
you know, what we're going to do is actually we're going to do a, a deposit required. And I know Bud has that credit card. And we're going to ask for a total of 50% down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, Bud, we're going to give Bud 30 days to pay the balance. They can do the balance on the PO, but I need the deposit on the credit card. Um, I don't have any delivery details yet because I haven't decided what I'm going to be, um, you know, weights and dimensions. So I can't really get that done until I get the order completed. But we've got everything out here. We haven't really saved anything yet, but probably a good idea to save it. Always look over and make sure I've got it named. So I'll probably put a number on it like 01 just so I do this multiple times. That's not a bad idea. So we'll hit save proposal. Um, in this scenario, I put a PO number in, but we don't have a PO number yet because an order hasn't been placed. But if they had a blanket PO, which is possible where they have a PO they they can just run orders against, you could certainly put that in there. So we got to add a product. And the normal way we would do this, we would just click on add products. And I might have a soccer design already done in here. In this case, I'm just going to use a pre-done product. And let's give them both options. Let's give them the ash and the navy. And I'm going to click on next. I used a colorways to change the colors in the navy. So the part that was navy in the original imprint from Graphics Flow is now gray. And this is just a Graphics Flow template. Didn't really do a whole lot of editing in here. Um, just basically changed the colors and changed the copy. That was it. And let's get our, our money stuff in here. These prices are in the store because this was a product that I loaded in the store already. And as a result of that, if they're going to get more of a wholesale price, I'm going to need to do a cost override. And so I'm going to add this to the proposal, but it's full retail pricing. And because they're placing a bulk order, I'm going to do a cost override on that. And so I'm going to override the price and they're getting a level to say a 20% discount. Well, we're probably going to give them more than 20%. Let's say we're going to give them a wholesale price of $15. So let's go and update that pricing. Give them a little bit better deal because they're ordering a bigger quantity. Now, if I was doing this from scratch and I was creating a product, then we'd have the automatic pricing calculation that would come in here. And we're going to do a little bit cheaper on the, because we don't have to do a white underbase, so it's a it's one color less on my printing, so we'll do that. And we're going to save the proposal. So proposal saved. Now that the proposal is saved, you will see the little send proposal button. This is how we're going to send the proposal to the customer. But we're really doing a send them in a quote, and we're asking them to pay. It's important to recognize that you got some things going on here. you got statuses going on here. But if you click the little three buttons here, there's a lot going on here. Like you could go into this proposal and clone it and just swap out the product. Um, you can get a shareable link to the proposal if you just want to send them that proposal view. You can print it. If you want to create a PDF, you can print it to um, a PDF file as a quote, print it to a PDF file as an invoice, actually print it onto paper if you want. You can mark it as lost because this is creating a sales pipeline. This is an open quote in your system, and it's creating a sales pipeline. You can also go and pay it, or maybe Bud calls you up and says, hey, we're good. You don't, We don't need to do any more, and you just want to send it to the order. So you've got a lot of latitude in here. But what I'm mostly interested in here is this customer view. Because the customer view is going to come in a couple different flavors. And flavor one is invoice, which is the standard old boring invoice layout. You know, that has the approve and pay button in there. I could just zip off a, a downloadable PDF, send it over there. They click approve and pay. Um, it hypertext links to an actual web page. So pretty, pretty cool way to do it. Not my favorite way. If you go over here to customer view and go to quote, it's nothing different. Same thing, just says quote. That's it, just says quote. Same exact thing going on. But the cool way to do it is to send it as a proposal because it makes it interactive. And so if I go over here and I say customer view and send it as a proposal, now they're getting a web page. And that web page is interactive. And the colors and the logo and all the information that are being populated here is coming from the store because remember Bud was linked to the store. So that's all coming from the store, which is really cool. And this proposal is going to be linked in their customer account as well. They're going to get a link to this proposal and they're going to be able to view their details here. So they want to see that nice big blow up of the image way better than that standard boring view so they can see what's going on. Not enough to print off of, but they can really see what's going on. And you'll notice a couple of other things, approve and pay right down there, approve and pay. So idea is cash flow, right? We're trying to get 
we're, in, we're reconditioning our customers to pay us up front. If you don't ask a coach or a member of a school administration if they have a credit card, they're not going to volunteer that. They, in many cases, prefer to use the credit card if they have the ability to purchase at the dollar level that's required for your order because uh, it's less paperwork for them. You know, they, you know, and it's a less, it's a lot of drama, you know, they're not having to call the purchasing and acquisition department and every school is different. Every business entity has their own policies about credit card usage. But if you don't ask, you don't know. And I love getting the credit card usage because a couple things. Number one is I get paid up front if I choose to. Number two, if I want to, I can set up credit card surcharging in my Exoft account, meaning I can pass on as much as 3% of the credit card fees to the customer. So if they choose to pay by credit card and say, hey, listen, you can do that. There's a 3% surcharge fee. Um, it's all um, pretty heavily regulated by the government. You have to make sure that surcharging is legal in your state. If you're using MasterCard, there's a little process you have to go through um, to tell Mas MasterCard you are surcharging. We've got great videos on YouTube on how to do it, but it's a pretty standard practice. And I notice in my own consumer habits, I see it quite often when I'm purchasing, especially at restaurants really think too much of it. Um, but when I'm at the restaurant, I always have the opportunity to pay cash, right? But here's the other thing. You have the opportunity to pay with ACH and giving your customer, I'm just going to pay the, the, the minimum deposit here. Um, giving your customer the ability to pay through ACH is going to save you a ton on fees. And especially if it's a situation where you're doing, you know, a fair amount of business with somebody and, you know, they're paying off invoices five, $6,000 at a time, saving on those credit card fees and not having to do surcharging. Um, with ACH is, is a really great idea. And especially if you're getting a lot of checks from people, and I think just a good play, people are sending you checks to say, hey, listen, don't send me a check. We have electronic funds transfer. I can just get all the banking information off your check, uh, electronic funds transfer, ACH, and you don't have to pay credit card surcharging fee. So do you see how that works? If you start charging for credit card surcharging, you know, let them know, because you only can charge a max of 3%. You get to send set the percentage, but it's a max 3%. Um, now all of a sudden you're saying, Hey, you know, it's 3% surcharging fee, but if you do ACH, we don't have to charge that fee, man, that, that money comes into your account quick. So if they went in here and they clicked ACH, we would have to have all their banking details and do all that. But let's say, Bud, he's like, he got this. He said, Hey, listen, I'm just going to call in the credit card or, you know, the kids have all collected cash. I'm just going to come into the office and drop off a dubious looking envelope full of $20 bills. We can still pay this offline. So we're going to come back over here. And we're going to get out of here. And by the way, there's a messaging system in there. So if they can message you back and forth or you can email them right here or um, there's a phone number. So if he wants to call you. So he clicked on that, auto dialed me, said, I'm coming down to the office. So what we want to do then is we want to convert this into an order. So I am going to send this to an order now. So we're sending that over to an order and I can put a little comment, but it's coming down to the office. Okay, there you go. Send it to orders. And where does that land? That lands in the order manager and there's Bud and let's pay that. So you'll notice this order is actually going into Printavo too, because I have this order linked with my Printavo. We've got the order. We need to pay. What, what's the balance? 2,088 bucks. I'm going to go over here and process a payment. So I could send out a payment request if I needed to nag him right here, but we're just going to book a payment and they dropped off all those $20 bills. Payments all cleared up. I'm going to report it. And so now it's going to be flagged in the order manager as paid. And I have not set up a delivery method on this. But it's going to come pick up curbside. You can add pickup and delivery fees now with Inksoft as well. So there we go. We're all we're all ready to roll. I'm going to save those changes and create an invoice. We just created an invoice. We're using this as an invoicing tool. The cool part is this is all flowing into the the store. So all of this is flowing into the store and their user account. And so any orders they place to the store, any orders placed to the user account, um, they're all going to be stored in the same place. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, we're going to talk about the end user shoppers portal is what the internal name is or the customer portal. And let me show you where to find that. So I'm going to go over to a store. I'm just going to go over to my East Eagle store. Got a lot of exciting fun things going on in the East Eagle store. So I'm just going to navigate over there. And I could just type in East and my East Eagles booster. Let's click on that. I'm in the store. You will notice a new tab. New tab is store performance. So this is for you. So this is, you can see 
like all the activity in your store. You can, you, you know, if you want to click over here, I'll go straight to an order report so you can see the whole thing. You click over here. These are all the most popular sold products. And let's switch it out to the least solds. You get some visibility. If you're running coupons or gift cards through the store, you can see all the activity and link to the reports for that. If you want to view the fundraising report, you can link to that. If you just want to view like overall revenue report and see what's going on, um, you can, you know, view that. So you've, you've got a lot of kind of quick links and things that are going on through your store. That store performance dashboard, we're seeing the version that's for us, but there's a different version for your customer that takes out, we'll call it financially sensitive information that you don't want them to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate what the customer would see if they were in their account. So I'm in my account, I'm logged in, and I happen to be logged in as a user. So if I go over here to my account, look at there's all these different things that are going on in here. And so if you, we want to kind of just land on the store performance dashboard, we'll just land on that. And then all those tabs that you saw when you were clicking on account, those all line up right with here. So here's the customer facing version. You notice they don't have links to the reports. Um, there's no like sensitive financial information in here, but they can see what's moving through their store. They can see their last orders. If there's any coupons, um, they could click on a, a coupon report. They can click on a gift card report. Um, something that a customer shared with me, and I thought this was very clever, is they do a lot of fundraising programs with youth athletics. And what they use Inksoft for is they create promo codes for all of their kids on their teams. Not hard to do that. It creates a promo code for all the kids on their teams. It's a spreadsheet. They upload it. Every kid's got their own code, and they print out these postcards. And the kid writes their code on the postcard, and it's got a little QR code that drives people to the store. And as a result of that, Guess what? When they go to purchase, they put that code in and they can track who where the where the who generated the the business. So they can recognize the kids. They run spiff programs and say, hey, listen, you know, if you generate two thousand dollars, you're gonna get a t-shirt or a sweatshirt. And I thought that was very clever using coupon codes to track who's actually, you know, where the where the revenue's coming from, you know. And you've got kids, they're very aggressive and they're gonna throw those gift cards out. You can have Vistaprint or whoever print them for you, but they're going to throw those cards out to everybody they talk to. And those kids are out there hustling. And guess what? They get rewarded because they might get some kind of free product. And we can also see that the store is going to end on the 31st of December um, because we use the store demo all the time. So let's kind of see what's going on here. We don't have any open quotes or invoices, so everything's kind of paid up. But we do see that there's an order in progress right now. So the customer can say, okay, they're processing that order. Oh, yeah, we did cancel a couple orders. You know, that's kind of a bummer. But here's one I shipped. And, oh, you know what? I need to reorder this. So they could just click on uh, view order details if they wanted to and click right up on that. And when they do that, guess what they see? They can print their receipt or they can reorder. This is when we're talking about that customer that had set up and already used up over 100 stores. This was the exact reason that he did it. And the part he missed was that he didn't want to talk to the customer, but the customer doesn't want to talk to you either. They just want to go in and go into their account and reorder. You know, when I go to reorder, you know, a consumable thing that maybe we order shampoo from Amazon periodically, I just want to go into my past orders and Amazon and reorder my shampoo. I don't want to talk to anybody. And so this is how you create that Amazon-like shopping experience for your customer by using this customer portal or what we call their account, where they can go into their account. So if the customer wants to reorder, all they got to do is just hit the old reorder button here. Um, they can edit size and quantity and go straight to the cart, reorder, boom, you don't even have to talk to them. Now, the, the other thing you can do, if they just want to contact you, they've got a little contact link. If they want to contact you, um, they can do that as well. And you can do an offline order. But it's a pretty amazing way to facilitate a reorder. But this is what's giving them that self-service experience. And you'll notice as I'm, I'm back in here, I also have my designs. So there's they've been on the Inksoft designer because this store, we have a designer that's built just for them. But if they want to go and edit this design right here, I mean, they started this and saved this in the Inksoft designer, but maybe they want to go and act, do a new sport. Maybe they want to change this to volleyball. Guess what they can do? They can just click on that design template, say edit and designer, go back to the template, and they can just name drop it and have it say, you know, whatever they want, volleyball or baseball or whatever their sport is. So they have the latitude 
to do all of that. So we linked that per portal. We talked about how we're connecting it to artwork through the designer. And let me show you kind of the next level of that. And then I'll dip this on one of these orders into Printavo and show you how that works. So if I go to this store, what I've done with this store is I've taken designs that I've created in graphics flow. I've exported the design in a vector format, just exported it in vector. I omitted the text that I want to make live. And I'll show you why I did that. Because what I can do in the designer is I can upload the PDF part, just this part, but not this part. And then I just go into the text editor. I had been insert text. The majority of the graphics flow fonts are already in the Inksoft designer. So if I know the font that was in graphics flow, I just use the same font, type this in, and then I save the design. And the sharing link right here is the link that brings me straight to this graphic if they want to do further editing. That's that's that next level of, of doing that. And that's where that portal becomes really handy because if they save that design, they can go back to that design, edit it again, change it from soccer to volleyball to baseball or to seniors. To me, that magic of having the portal connected to the store, having localized artwork in the designer populated in the store is it's magic. And you can do this on quite a few different levels. I'll show you kind of next level. If you've known me for a while, you know how I feel about what we call logos on stuff. Logos on stuff is this. That's the boring corporate side of things. If you're a promotional products distributor, business is reliant on logos on stuff. That's great. We want that business because it's kind of a centerpiece of the ordering from a lot of our customers. But that's the business that's most vulnerable because all you need is one new buyer, you know, a little bit of buyer turnover, new buyer comes in, maybe a younger person, they're a little savvier about sourcing, or maybe they're bringing in another supplier that they worked with in their last job. And all of a sudden that business has gone somewhere else. So we want the logos on stuff business. We don't want that to be the only thing that's going on because what we want to do is we want to establish ourselves as a creative resource to our customers so that they stick with us. And the way you can do that is this. Yeah, we're going to give you your boring logo, but we're also going to give you some cool things that are pre-decorated. And so if you want to order something that's a little bit more fun and has your department on it and has a nice, you know, maybe localized graphic, created a product your employee wants to wear, that wants to purchase, not that boring logo. And so it creates what we like to call plus business. So you're doing that kind of, you want fries with that thing? Um, You're saying, hey, we'll do your boring stuff too, but what I'm going to do with your permission is periodically throughout the month, I'm going to add some new graphics into the program. We have a ability to do low or no minimum orders because we have a direct power printer. We'll just fulfill those on the fly. We have to charge you a little bit more because of the handling on that. So we have to increase the price or what we could do on that product. We could set it up as a bulk order where they, we're just going to collect orders over a period of time and then pr- produce them all together. But there's another whole layer to this because the layer is this. You can let them go in and personalize that. Same thing, graphics flow design. I set it up in the designer. I saved it. I went into Inksoft and I actually went in and applied it to a category. So it's actually in a design category. And they can go in here and change this to pediatrics. And the coolest part is, is the marketing department can go into their account. They can go into their designs and do the designing themselves. And then they don't have to bug their internal marketing graphic designer. They can just do it themselves. And so what you end up doing is that you just make it super convenient for people to buy from you. And you just want to make it easy for them to purchase with you. And when you're providing creative services and you're helping folks with graphics, they, they know they have to get that through you. And so you can charge more. And if you're just taking the file from, you know, there's a country music festival in the marketing department for the country music festival, did all the art. And all you're doing is in taking that art, you know, paying somebody to color separate it for you and printing, even though you're selling them a finished product and you're buying in the blanks, you're just one step away from being a contract printer in terms of pricing structure. You just can't charge that much for it. You're just not going to be able to add enough value to that equation. And there's enough people that will do that work super cheap that you end up being in that position. But if you're working with clients where you're controlling the artwork and you're offering creative services, You just don't get beat up on the pricing to anywhere near that degree. Being strategic about how you build your customer base in today's marketplace, where everything is so commoditized, is pretty smart. 
I mean, that's, and I know it's not easy and then there's not a, a perfect solution and everybody's business composition is a little bit different in terms of price sensitive customers versus those wonderful customers that pay, pay a fair price and reorder all the time. But you can always upgrade your customer base. And the way to upgrade your customer base is raise your prices. You know, if you have a customer that's just kind of uh, an irritant and you're, you know, take a close look at the work they've done with you over the last six months or a year and you're like, man, we're just not really making any money on these guys. Raise your prices to a level that's tolerable. And if they stay with you, that's great. That's awesome. That's a win for everybody. But if they leave somewhere else, they might try somebody else and they don't get the same quality. They very well might come back. Last step, I want to show you how these orders swing back into Printavo. So I'm going to go back to my order manager real quick here. So that order from Bud, it's just sitting out and it's chilling in Printavo. And I go to my storefronts. I have a dedicated tab here that says Inksoft Stores. And I'm going to have that store, that Central Booster CM store. So all those, that order just flooded right in here. And let's say it was from an actual e-commerce store. And orders are trickling in, trickling in, trickling in. They're all going to trickle into this section right here. What we're going to do here is I'm just going to take this order right here. I'm going to add it to an invoice. And I got to pick a customer. And there's Bud. And we're going to create an invoice. And now I'm just going to walk through this production like I would any other order in Printavo. So now this is just sitting in invoices. And I'm going to come back here and just going to click on it. And I haven't decided how I'm going to print it yet because, okay, how many pieces? I've got 72 and 72. You know, I got 144 pieces. Even though there's a color change there, I think I'm going to screen print these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and click on edit. And I'm going to tell Printabo I want to screen print them. So these are going to be screen printed. This one's a three color. Done. And I'm going to have that show up on the invoice there. And then this one is going to be a four color because I have a white underbase. So we're going to make that a four color and done and save it. And at this point, I want to schedule it over to my power scheduler. So super easy. The order came in from Inksoft. So most of this stuff is already done. Now, here's the thing. I might want to get it over to the art department first. And so I'm just going to ping it to the art department now. And what that did is it just tasked it to um, the art department and I'm going to pick somebody specifically, Elaine, to do the art. And we got all our preset tasks over here, too, if we need to set those up. But that just pinged Elaine. Elaine, she just got a message that said, hey, listen, you've got art to do for this order. And then she picks it up, and she goes through all these status changes and, and walks it through all these status changes, and the artwork got approved. And you notice it created all these other tasks for the screen printing department. Now, as soon as the artwork got approved, um, that's one way to do it. And then once the artist approved, I'm just going to move it into pre-production because what that's going to do, it's going to slap it on the power scheduler here. And here's all the little micro steps that are required to get this done for screen printing. So instead of managing all these steps, I don't have to do that if I don't want to. If I put it on the power scheduler, all the steps are right in here. And that's, to me, that's a much easier way to manage that because every process has its own set of micro steps. You know, embroidery is different than screen printing versus DTG or D sublimation or direct film transfers. So the power scheduler allows me to set up these custom workflows by process. And then I have a visual scheduling tool. You just go over to the power scheduler and that's a screen printing job. So let's go down here to screen printing. But we're going to go over here and pick up that order. I could put it on a machine right here. So if I go over here and I add my minutes, so what is it, 72 pieces? I'm going to say that's going to take an hour and 20 minutes to print. And I'm going to put that on Auto 1 right there. And let's see what capacity we have for Auto 1. So for Auto 1, I'm going to print Monday. And so I'm going to take that job and I'm just going to throw that onto Monday. So there it is. And it's all scheduled on Auto 1 for Monday. Super easy. If I needed to move it or add a rush order, we can do that. I'm going to go over here to list view. Here's every order I've got in the whole system for screen printing. And we got a lot going on for screen printing. And here's all the little steps. And I can see where we're all backed up in here. And you'll notice if, if I start moving these little objects around here, I have all the little statuses for every one of the little steps here. But I also have views. So if I just want to see a view of what's going on in the receiving department or see what's going on in the screen room, they haven't started the screens. 
But let's go ahead and finish the screen. So see how that drops out now. Power schedule is this great visual tool that we have for managing all those kind of micro steps by process. And you have all the different views and then you have the group view here. So that's the whole workflow. So when we're done and Bud's order is completed, if we're shipping it through an actual shipping method, what we're going to do is we're going to say Mark is ready to ship or pick up an Inksoft. And then we're going to walk it through the rest of the steps in Inksoft. So it's just going to be sitting there in my ready to ship. If it starts in Inksoft and the money's collected in Inksoft, it's going to end in Inksoft. So there's my order. Paid, ready for pickup. Send pickup notification. So the whole point of this webinar is teaching you guys how to link proposals to store, manage user accounts, give that customer that self-service buying experience through the customer portal, and make it easy on two groups. You as the business owner or employee and your customer as the consumer. And it seems like a match made in heaven. It's easier for everybody. It's more productive. Happier customers, happier staff, better cash flow. It's just a really great way to run your business. Thank you very much for attending Inksoft Academy, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.